Hey guys, it's Man 500 here. Um, we're back at the uh, the table where I usually do my reviews. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, fishing season. Um, I'm kind of getting out of the hunting mode now. Hunting season is pretty well over. Today is February the 6th. Um, so hunting season is pretty well over. So I'm starting to get back into the fishing mode. And pretty much what that means is usually I go through a transition. Um, Usually it happens right, right around this time and in March a lot. I start thinking about, you know, what am I going to do this year for fishing? Um, what are some of the fishing holes that I want to hit? Some of the different lakes that I want to go fishing on? And also camping as well. Um, I want to, I got a big backpacking year planned. I'm hopefully going to be able to, to, uh, to do it, get out and do that. I um, want to do a lot of backpacking this year. Um, a lot of different camping trips. Um, but anyways, I've got to get moving because this video is going to take up a lot of time and I want to get it in one video and that is tackle. I wanted to show you guys my tackle collection, what I carry, what I use and just different stuff like that. Um, it's pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to forget stuff. I'm still a little rusty, no pun intended, on the uh, on my fishing tackle. You know, the different brand names and stuff because I've been in the hunting mode for the past few months. so. I'm going to try and uh, give you the different names and stuff and what I use, how I use it, and pretty much just run run and get through this video because I want to put it all into one video, but there's no guarantees that it's going to get done. So sit down, take a load off. This video is going to take a long time for me to get through. So I'm going to just, I've got my, I've got a big pile of tackle boxes here that I'm going to run through. Some of it you've seen before, some of it you see me use, so... Here we go. Um, first up, I've got a Plano. The model number on this Plano line box. This is a line box. This is their smaller size of it. You get it in two different sizes. Uh, let's see if I can find a model number on this. I should have all these written down. That would be the smart thing to do, but I don't see a model number. So, Anyways, this just holds all your line nice and organized. All inside there. You can see the different slots for your different fishing line. Uh, right now all I've got is some cheap no-name brand or no-name stuff. 8-pound test. Just cheap little bits of stuff in there. But I don't know the exact model number so if you want to go check it out, get yourself one. As you can see I label all my stuff accordingly. So go check these out. These things come in really handy especially with those little holes um, in there for spooling your line onto your reels. Once again, I'm going to try all the lures that I have in in my tackle boxes. Troke gear, did a separate video on this. I don't have to go over it. <laughs> it. The annotation is up in the corner. I did a separate video in this when I got this. I have not used any of this yet. Um, so if you want to go see my separate video on that, go check it out. The only thing different about that video and this one is that up in here... As you can see, I've got a little wrap lot jointed in number seven in the rainbow trope color, my favorite lure probably of all time. So go check this out. This is one of their waterproof boxes. Snaps down. It's really nice. Um, the model number on this is 3640-1. Um, this is by Plano as well. So pretty much all my tackle boxes are Plano. So really love these tackle boxes. Waterproof float. The only problem is if you get water in here and you close it up, the water's going to stay inside because it does have that big, nice seal on it. So, it's the only disadvantage. Um, something that you might have seen before. This is my hard baits and buzz baits box. As you can see, of course, it's labeled in big, nice letters with a Sharpie. So, I'm going to go through some of the baits in here that I have. Um, let me see. So this is a bigger size of their waterproof tackle box. Um, in here I've got a Bob Azumi lure, hard lure. Great for deep depths. I've used this in lakes and in uh, the ocean. It's more in lakes than anything. But really bright. Um, silver color. Um, I've got, uh, these are hard to find actually, uh, where I am. So I don't see them too much. But this is the, uh, this is a Rapolo original floater. This is in gold. This is the 11 size. And this is my favorite lure. If you can use this in the right time during the bass season, the smallmouth bass season up here where I am, Nova Scotia, um, you're going to catch some big smallmouth bass off this. And they are really hard to find. And I'm lucky I found one. 
I actually got this in a trade. I traded a guy, uh, Outdoors got 500 actually. Um, I traded him a lure, or uh, a fishing reel for a bunch of lures. So you're going to see them here. So in, so I also have that one. Um, those are two there. also have, uh, this is a DT6. Used that a little bit this season. Caught a few little bass off it. Nothing too spectacular. Nothing to write home about. Um, but a really nice lure for bouncing off the rocks. Um, six foot uh, depth. As you can see, this is the silver color. I have, uh, this is probably one of the longest uh, rapple lures that I've owned. This is uh, Husky Jerk in the yellow and the orange bottom. I don't know what the exact color is. And uh, the only difference is I put a dress hook on the back off one of my old X wraps. So that's that. Um, I've had this. This has been this has been with me for a while. Uh, great and kedgy for catching perch, big perch. Um, back in here, of course, I have this is a newer one. I've got a live target, uh, six foot diver. This is a pumpkin seed live target. I uh, once again I got this from Outdoors Guy 500. Um, this was a, another lure trade for a fishing reel. So that goes in there. I do have my older one. My older one I just used and used and used and used. And uh, that one um, I had to uh, kind of get rid of um, because uh, it's just no good. It's got one eye missing. It's scratched up. I use it all this season. It's just a great lure. In here, this is, what is this? This is a cheap bomber lure, I think, um, in, in a red and black color. Uh, this is actually a cheaper lure. It's called the Frenzy, the FR34. Um, I don't know, I used it for jigging quite a bit. Caught a few off it, not a whole lot. Once again, nothing to write home about, but this is a cheaper uh, uh, Berkeley lure that I got. I've got a Strike King Buzzbait. Awesome for pickerel. Um, also awesome for smallmouth bass. So I've got one of those. This is a chartreuse color, I believe. Um, this is the white color, and then over here I have a Strike King spinnerbait. Never caught anything off these spinnerbaits before, um, but I do get the smaller sizes for smallmouth bass. So that's that. Those are my hard baits and buzz bait kit. Model number on this tackle box is 3740-1. Um, once again, by Plano, this is one of their bigger waterproof boxes. Next up, I got this tackle box on clearance. Uh, this is a CDS tackle box. You've seen it in my big four pound bass video. I used it to measure a bass with it. Um, pretty big tackle box. Got a lot of room in it. Um, got four latches here, not waterproof. Four latches, really awesome for holding hard baits. Um, are really great for that purpose. So I'm gonna go over some of the ones that I have in here. Up top, I have a big jointed uh, uh god I'm trying to think what this is this is a mat zoo or man zoo um big swim bait um i keep that in there never really caught anything off this this does have the uh kvd treble hooks on it um over here i do have a clack and crank i have a bigger one of these i took it out because the rattle was too loud um but this one is just the right amount of noise i keep that in there as well these are all my hard baits um, in here, I bought this near the end of the season. This came in a Cabela's order because I couldn't find around here. This is the X-Wrap um, Subwalk number 9 size, as you can see in the back there. Haven't really used it a whole lot. I love the colors on the X-Wrap, so haven't really caught anything off them, but I'm willing to try them this season. Um, over here, I have another favorite lure by Rapala. This is a uh, number 11 floater in the gray color. This goes perfect with the gold color. Um, match those two up and then you just kill them on these. This is a knockoff lure that is missing an eye. It's got the KVD troubles on it once again. This used to flash underwater. It doesn't anymore. Um, this is a, a Blaze crankbait. Kind of cheap. Cheesy Walmart bin find. Never really used it a whole lot. Didn't catch anything off it. So it's just in there chilling. <laughs> up on the tripod. This is one that I've tested before in my trolling test, caught a few perch off it. This is a smallmouth, uh, live target smallmouth bassler, um, shallow diver. Love it, look at the colors on that. I mean, 
you can't really go wrong with a live target lure. I mean, the, the colors are just amazing. Hope you can see that, but see the detail in it. But it's just incredible paint jobs on these uh, live targets. Um, over here, this is a great substitute for a Rapala uh, floater. This is a shallow diver. It sits right on top of water until you start cranking. You can jerk it and jerk it, and it's just like a top water lure. So this is uh, a large one, fast color. Didn't do so well with this. Caught some tanks off of this lure right here. You can even see the scale on it there. Um, caught some tanks off of this. I've got two colors there. And I think I have another small mouth. Or no, no, this is a bomber crankbait, a uh, square bill, and that uh, chartreuse like color. Um, black going through green to orange. Okay, I start moving through these. Um, this is uh, another Rapala lure. This is a shad, a shad wrap. Uh, jointed, uh, great lure, used it for the Outdoors Guy 500 fishing, didn't video it, but we caught some nice bass off of these. Um, over here, another Blaze Crankbait, Deep Diver, didn't catch anything off it, uh, kind of a bluegill pattern. Over here, this is one that I didn't get a chance to use. This is uh, another Bomber Lure, I believe. This is the Fat Free Fingerling, as you can see there, it's marked on the side, and you can see the sparkles in it, so I can't wait to try that out this season. And last but not least over here, I have another Rapala Lure. This is a Dives 2 6 foot, another one, um, in a different color pattern. So, so they did, Rapala did a pretty good job. Not as good as the live targets, but still really great classical lures to use. So those are hard baits in the CDS Plano tackle box. And the model number on this tackle box is... I like to tell you all the model numbers so you guys can go pick these up if you want them. Uh, it's a CDS tackle box. It's got the slanted dividers in it. Uh, as you can see, it's labeled. So this was on clearance, so that's really why I picked it up. Uh, next up, I have another plane of tackle box, as usual. This is one of my bigger ones. It's labeled all-purpose because that's what I use it for. Uh, model number on this one is uh, 3870. Um, and you can attach another one of these right here and here you can see the attachments for it You can attach two of these together to make a double-sided tackle box, but I've only got one because it's so big So in there that's pretty much what it says. It's all purpose. I've got a floating Rapala number 11 size in the bleeding color. This is uh, bleeding chartreuse shed um, Next up I have uh, a bleeding copper flash great for uh, bass and uh, and uh, pickerel. Um, there's a box for my jointed. It's out of. It's in the trout gear. Seen it already. This is another trout lure by Rapala. This is a uh, number seven, I believe, floating in the brown trout color. Just some little plastics unscented. Um, more little plastics unscented. Um, I've got one of these Matzu metal scrubs for your hand. They don't really work, but I do have one if anybody ever wanted to use it. Use cold water with this and scrub your hands really well. Um, it does take off some of the scent, but not all the scent. Um, some more unscented plastics. Um, I've got my tabs here, extra tabs for in the tackle box. I've got a little spinner bait, never caught anything off it. This is a bigger Strike King. Spinner bait. I've got uh, Blue Fox uh, 5 8 spoon and a Fire Tiger. A five, another 5 8 spoon or pretty close. Oops. No name brand in the diamonds, the five diamonds there. I've got a Blue Fox spinner, 5 8 once again. This is kind of their another color. You can see it's really bright and flashy. I've used it a little bit, not a lot. Never caught anything off them. I like to pick them up because they're cheap and I might need them. Uh, this is a smallmouth jig, great for in rivers, um, in the lakes, and that's all in that one. So that's the all-purpose. I like taking this trout fish with me because it's got a handle on it and it does fit in my backpack so I can use it for that purpose. Uh, next up, um, I do have one of these big suckers right here, 
one of these deep containers. The model number on this one is... Hang on here. I'll try and find the model number for you folks. So you can go and look them up. But... Oh, here we go. Uh, 3730. This is our bigger deep storage one. It is heavy because it is loaded out right now. So in here, I keep my soft plastics and scents. We killed them on the last season here on these little suckers right here. Right off the bat in the back here. These are the Gary Yamatos. As you can see the price tag on them, they're pretty expensive. Um, but these things just kill. These are the two different colors that I use. Solid green works well. Solid green with, uh, solid green with uh, just flakes. Any of that sort of stuff. It's just something in them that small mows love. And this is a smaller 4 inch. 10 inch, this is the watermelon color, and over here, this is the dark pumpkin. And you get 10 inch in a pack, but really good, great baits. Also, something that I never really use is these are the heavyweight ones. Once again, check out the price tag, they're pretty expensive from Home Hardware. Um, and then in here, I do have a little bit of more Gary Motto in a plastic bag. These are the bigger 7 inches, I think. Um, and right back here, I also keep some trout attractant, and I just throw this in my bag before I go. Um, up next, have some bass attractant. This is a Perkley power bait. Once again, this stuff is not cheap, and it takes me a while to gather this stuff up. Um, in here, I've got three bags, I believe, of tubes. Great baits later in the season. Um, also have some zoom tubes. These are great as well. These are the bigger ones, I believe. Um, better than salt. Uh, these are four inches, I believe. Um, next up, these things kill too. These things are really deadly. Uh, not those. These right here. Gulp. This stuff is awesome. These are some of my newer packs. I threw my older ones. But this stuff really works well. And even these littler ones. This is... Uh, Powerbait Minnow, 3 inch, in smelt color, these ones are in Black Shad, these are the Jerk Shads by Ger Berkeley Gulp. Um, in here up front I just have a few odds and ends, I've got some big tubes by Lunker Hunt, never really caught anything off them. These are the big like 4 inch, with a lot of scent in them. Um, I've got some Powerbait uh, Ribbon Tail Grubs in Chartreuse, really great color. Um, great for pickerel. And then last but not least, I have some freshwater craws. Never really used them a whole lot. Um, over in here, just some knockoff plastics. Don't ask me what the names of them are. They're just loose. Got some more Senkos, knockoff Senkos in there. Um, got some more craws and stuff like that. And some lizards and a few frogs. So that's just what's in there. Try not to make this video run too long, but it's hard as you can see my stuff's right there. Um, I'm gonna have to make this two parts, guys. Stay tuned. Um, we'll be back here in a minute. 